beautiful humans. Today, I want to talk to you about how to make more money, life-changing money, good money with small audiences. And I really want to put to you the challenge that you might not need more leads. You might not need more traffic to dramatically increase your income. And I want to share some proof and some really core, simple uh, additions to your funnel that you can make to make this a reality. So the most common challenge I get from clients when I'm working with them, I've worked with over a thousand. If I'm to ask them, you know, what's the biggest thing holding you back from higher levels of revenue? There are 20, they want to get to 50, they're 50, want to get to 100. What do you think the number one question is? Well, sorry, the number one challenge is. It's like, oh, I just need more leads, right? And they might be specific about that. I need more Instagram followers. I need more, you know, LinkedIn connections. Wah, wah. <laughs> LinkedIn's okay. Um, I need more Instagram followers. I need more sales calls. I need more inbound DMs. There might be a specificity to it. But most people, coaches, consultants, online experts, people trying to get clients online, their bottleneck they believe is always and forever lead generation. And in this video, I just want to quickly and kind of succinctly point out that is not the case for most people. And I want to share some proof. I'm going to share some stories from my own experience and what you can do in your funnel and in your business to change that. So let's flash back to end of 2021. Funnily enough, I'm actually right now in the house in Los Angeles that we came to that was an Airbnb uh, in the end of 2021 going into 2022. And in 2021, we had a massive growth season. We were in New Zealand. We went from 130,000 a month to 347,000 a month in 90 days. It was cash collected. I built a team of 13 people, big sales team, you know, ops manager, blah, blah, blah. And I was cooked, man. I was smoked. Uh, I think those are kind of Kiwi New Zealandisms, but you kind of get the drift. It's not positive. And I'm drinking every night. I'm fatter than, you know, the fattest I've ever been back then. And it, I was just kind of thinking, working uh, internally, externally at breakneck speed. And so coming into 2022, I knew something had to dramatically shift. And I didn't exactly know what. I knew the business I had built for me was not the one for me, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted. I just knew what I didn't want. And so I did the only logical thing that made sense to me in that moment which was, was if I just stop growing and just main, focus on maintaining, then I can at least create some equilibrium. I can reduce my hours, reduce the stress, and really focus in on what it is I do want. So I took the team from 13 people down to four people at the start of 2022. And I massively reduced my hours in that. But the biggest decision I made was we are not going to do any marketing or any sales this year, or at least for the next kind of few months. And so for the next seven months, I took on no new clients, no marketing, no content being posted, no ads, no setters, no closes, no real funnel to speak of at all. And it was really crazy. Uh, you know, I've shared about this in other videos, but we maintained our revenue in that year just through retention. It was like this huge insight moment that I'm not going to dive into in this video, but uh, basically in 2021, we collected $2 million cash. And in 2022, I did the exact same amount, like $2 million cash collected, but acquisition was off for the majority of the year. So it really blew my mind, changed the way I see recurring revenue and creating sticky offers and things like that. When it came time to turn everything back on, one of the things that had really helped us grow in 2021 was ads and kind of filling our Facebook group, which was the acquisition model at the time. And so we weren't spending proportionally a whole lot of money on ads. And when I tell you the number at the moment, that's going to be a lot of money. But, but just to give you an insight, it is not uncommon for people to dedicate 30, 40% of their budget to ads, right? So if you meet someone who's at 200K a month, it's not uncommon for that to be 70K, 80K, 90K a month in ads. And so when we got to $347,000 cash, I think we spent about 20 something thousand dollars on ads, which is a lot of money. I don't want to make light of that, but it was uh, one of the uncommon things that kind of comes back to the principle I, I'm going to share in a moment. So when it came time for me to turn acquisition on, we had this Facebook group of about 5,000 people. And I sat there and I asked myself, do I think my next 100 clients are already in this group? Meaning, do I need to keep spending money on ads and turn that bad boy back on as we're turning acquisition back on because I simply need more traffic? Or if I just focus my attention on creating massive value in this Facebook group and, and within my audience as a whole, do I think and feel confident that I'm going to get the next clients that I need? And this was in 2022. And we're in 2024 now. We're almost two years to the day 
that I made that decision. And only in the last six weeks have I turned ads back on, meaning like I'm getting new eyeballs, I'm getting traffic, I'm getting lead generation. And so I want you to understand kind of this key principle. In just under the last two years, I ran no ads, which means outside of a few little like, you know, a reel pops off or something like that, I really didn't have audience growth. My audience was more or less the same uh, the last two years up to about six weeks ago till I turned ads on again. And my principle and core conviction was this, that I didn't need more leads. I just needed to do a better job with the leads I already had. So I want you to like think through this for a second as a hypothetical. Let's say you have an audience of a uh, 1,000 people like a pretty engaged audience of a thousand people. And let's say out of those thousand people, you have got 20 clients. Again, all hypothetical, just work with me on the percentages. So you've converted 2% of your audience into paying clients. Now, let's right away cut out like 70% of people as if they're never going to work with you. Let's say 80% of people, okay? So we've now cut out 800 people from the thousand person audience. They're either not the right fit, they're not dream clients, they, they're they never going to see that you're the person for them. They're working with other coaches and courses and things like that. Um, for whatever reason, they're not going to work with you. The problem is we don't know what percentage, like what portion of that audience those people are, but let's just assume it's a big portion of that audience. You've got 1,000 people. You've worked with 20. 800 people are never going to work with you. My conviction is, and again, the percentages might change depending on how you got your audience, how big it is, whether it's stream clients, whether it's not. There's a percentage of people that are in the maybe category. And let's, in this example, assume that that is 180 people, right? Right, which might be more. Maybe that's, maybe that's overreaching. Let's say it's only 80 people, right? So you've got 2% that have worked with you, 90% that will never work with you, and, and 8%, right, 80 people that could work with you given the right offer, the right circumstances, the right timing. So you can either approach this and go, well, in order to get another 20 clients, I need another 1,000 followers, and that's totally doable, or you can look at it through the lens of, well, what if I just nurture the audience I already have and try and find that next 80 that might want to work with me? Now, I'm not proposing that you have to choose either or, but this is what I am saying. Most online entrepreneurs have funnels where leads either buy or die, meaning they try and build an audience in such a way that they're optimizing for the now people, right? See me a message, book a call, whatever it might be. And then we try and sell those people into the program into our offer, into our service. And then we simply try and buy new eyeballs to try and find the now buyers there. So, and then we just keep repeating it. And this is what leads people to constantly need more leads. This is what leads people to massively inefficient business models, bloated teams, huge expenses on ads. Because rather than doing a better job with the leads they already have, they're just in this mindset of like, okay, I've got 20 clients, I have a thousand followers, maybe it's less than that. And so I just need to keep getting more and more and more. The problem is, it's really hard to build a good audience. It is expensive. It is time intensive. For some of you, you've been at this for a few years. You might not even have the thousand people or maybe you're at a few thousand. So my point is, what if instead of you just desperately tried to get more followers, get more leads every single day of your life, and you pivoted majority of that energy to doing a better job with the people you already had? When I first started in business in 2018, I was able to get to 10K a month right away. Now that's an uncommon story. Literally my first 30 days, I was able to make $12,000 a month. And then I never dipped below that and then went to 20 and then eventually, I think like nine months later, hit 30K a month. Uh, so it was no, no, by no means a crazy success story of like, you know, zero to six figures a month in 90 days, but it was good. And I did that with very few dream clients in my audience. In fact, most of them were in-person networking opportunities I had initially. And then I just keep putting out content. And then eventually like people were kind of coming through the, wo the woodwork. I think that's the same, <laughs> uh, coming out of the woodwork. And um, that, that's how I did that. And, and when I look back at different stages of my life and different stages of my growth, the biggest growth came from not just buying a whole bunch of leads and uh, doing whatever I can to kind of grow my email list uh, massively. It was always down to me trying to take more seriously my job, my role as a leader of an audience to contribute more, to add more value. That I saw my lack of, of funnel flow, my lack of people coming into uh, being clients 
as not like their fault or those leads suck or I just need to get more eyeballs and you know get more traffic. I need to do a better job of leading them, creating goodwill, creating like sharpening my messaging, speaking to the right people, improving my offer. And so now today, uh, I have about an audience of 10,000, give or take. Now I think I have like eight or 9,000 on my email list. I've got 10,000 Instagram followers. And so let's overestimate that. Let's say it's 15,000 people, right? Um, I have made 9.5 million people from that audience, which like if you take the 10,000 person audience number, which I think is much more true and indicative of the actual audience I have, I've made just shy of $1,000 per follower. And so if you look at that, like I was able to get a million uh, in my business when I had under a thousand followers, which might seem really crazy to you, but it's because of what I'm about to teach you in terms of increasing funnel flow. But you have to decide, are you going to be this, this coach, this online entrepreneur that is constantly chasing the new and, and, and assuming that just more eyeballs, more Instagram followers, more emails are what you need to grow? Or are you going to step up? Stop being a marketer, start being a leader and actually do a better job with the people following you. Instead of creating a funnel where leads either buy or die, what if you nurtured, added value, shifted beliefs, really created a level of influence with the people that are those maybes, right? The portion of people that will never work with you, we don't know who they are. The maybes, we don't know who they are. All we know is that both groups are in our audience and if we do a good job with them, then the right people at the right time will raise their hand, jump on a call, send us a message, respond to whatever we're doing, and they'll move through our funnel. This shift for me was substantial. It was really cemented after leaving ads off for almost two years, staying relatively the same amount of uh, audience members, and yet still enrolling a few hundred clients since that moment. My conviction is, Your next level, your next income growth, it's not that it won't come from new leads, but that the majority of the people that are going to work with you are already consuming your content, are already on your followers list, are already on your emails list. It's just, are you doing a good enough job of leading them and showing them why you are the person, now is the right time, and you can actually help them achieve what they want to achieve in their life and in their business. So a couple of just key, really simple insights. I was talking to someone before who just came on as a one-to-one uh, client. And they were talking about how in their funnel, they send tons of outbound. And that's the way that they get clients. That's the way that they reactivate old clients. And I was not arguing with them because it was working. But what I said to them when they were like, you know, if they asked me this question, if you were me, what would you do in my situation? And I said, I would see content as the focus because content is the best follow-up strategy. Content is the best nurture strategy. Like this video might get a thousand views, let's say, over the next few weeks. Like I could focus on sending a thousand cold DMs or I can create this video once, add no editing, upload it to YouTube in a few minutes when I'm finished and it's much more efficient for my time and hopefully a lot of the people that watch it go, this was helpful, this was valuable and I've now created goodwill in the relationship. So there are three content strategies that I think you should all be focusing on to create more funnel flow and more what I call lead efficiency in your business. So you don't just desperately chase after new leads, you can actually do a better job with the leads that you have and find those maybes and convert them faster. So number one, you need a focus content strategy, right? Your dream clients are probably not going to follow you on 17 different platforms. So if you're spreading your energy, which is limited across LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook and whatever else, you are really, really um, affecting, I'm trying to think of the right word, but like you're really affecting uh, your ability to effectively reach those people and add value and create goodwill in that relationship. And so for me, that platform for years was Facebook. Now, Facebook is probably uh, just above LinkedIn in terms of uh, it's a more liked platform by me, but I don't really like Facebook. But it was incredibly effective at getting clients. And so I focused all my energy on Facebook. I sometimes post on Instagram just for fun, friends and family there, a couple of other followers, but I focused my daily social content on one platform. I tried the whole like Gary V, like Hormozy thing of like everything, everywhere, all at once, the omnipresent strategy. 
that can totally work when you're at a certain stage. But for most of us, for you watching this video, it is going to be much more beneficial for you to focus your energy on one social channel, to go all in on that, to post daily or regularly or consistently, whatever that means for you, and then sharpen your skills of content creation, sharpen your messaging, sharpen the topics you speak about, sharpen the clarity with which you speak about them so that you get better and better so those people, those core people that, that are part of your audience get hit, get get retargeted right by your content all the time, right? It's like you're omnipresent, you're everywhere. They can't seem to escape you. And that is the effect you wanna create and that is only created through focus. The second thing that is a no-brainer for me that works so well in tandem with a social channel is email. Now, the way that algorithms work is obviously when you post to a thousand people, not everyone's going to see it, even if it's banger content. So the problem with social, even though there are amazing benefits, it's by far the best way to focus your content strategy, is not everyone's going to see it and people are going to miss posts. And so the number one thing you should be doing for your email list is focusing on simple ways to grow it. Now, I could create a whole masterclass on this, but I'm just going to tell you the simplest way to grow your email list. You ready? Tell people you have an email list, right? I added a few hundred people to my email list a few weeks ago by saying, every week I send a few emails uh, on this subject. If you want to join the newsletter, like go ahead and sign up. And I had a few hundred people sign up. So you can create a lead magnet. Lead magnets are amazing. You can create mini chat automations and have like clicked emails on the way. But I'm just telling you right now, just whatever you do, just keep it simple and just tell people you have an email list in one way or another so you can get people on email. And then what I do is I repurpose my content from socials and then I post it on my email list. So if I'm posting a video or a carousel or a written post, I then send it on email too. This furthers that feeling of kind of simple omnipresence that I'm really talking about. Again, more lead efficiency. They're hearing from you more often. They're hearing relevant messages that are for them in a time that is right. So it's really, really powerful when you pair social with email. The third thing that I really only discovered two years ago that I wish I'd started so long ago was this, YouTube. YouTube is really powerful and why I use it alongside social and not just doing social and not just doing YouTube is I do not consider people viewing this or subscribing as leads. I can't contact you, you might comment, but like this is not a social channel, right? This is a great one-to-many channel. And on the flip side, I can post Instagram reels and carousels all day, but it's very hard to activate people. It's very hard to get people to know you, get people to understand you in a deep way in a short time period because everything's so short form. So they'd have to consume 130 second videos from you, 50 carousels and whatever else to sometimes, not always, but sometimes be in a position to be ready to buy. YouTube accelerates that process. So one of the things that you should be really focusing on is not how long someone needs to follow you in order to be ready to buy your main thing because that is a made up metric. There is no chronological time of like, you know, six weeks, 90 days, six months, all that's made up. The thing that I found that moves the needle more than anything else is number of hours of content consumed. So I've had people not know me and then 24 hours later pay me 15 grand, 20 grand, 25 grand because they consumed seven hours of my YouTube. And so when you have a funnel, what I call a content ecosystem, social, email, long form video, it's a very powerful trifecta to create a more omnipresent approach and more lead efficiency. The challenge I have for you is not to stop thinking about lead generation altogether. It's to stop obsessing over it as if simply getting more followers is gonna equal more money. Right? You don't just need a thousand more followers. You don't just need a thousand more email addresses. You need to get better with the people that are already following you. And you get better by taking your role as a leader seriously, by creating content, by what I call like preaching a gospel, right? Creating disciples in the way in which you teach people. Like when I talk about the value creator way, like I have inbound DMs being like, I need to learn the value creator way, not just can you help me get clients. They are feeling uh, evangelized by what I'm sharing. That's what you want to be doing. That's how you want to be seeing yourself. And so my challenge for you today is really simple. Most coaches, most online entrepreneurs create funnels where leads either buy or die. Don't be one of them. In your audience, there's a bunch of people right now that given the right amount of content, the right type of content, will be ready to work with you. And yes, lead generation is important, 
if you can run basic IG follow ads and things like that, like we teach our clients and spend you know, 10, 20, 30 dollars a day, that's fantastic. That totally works. Every new lead is helpful. But the obsession with new leads is probably what's keeping you stuck. Because you've been obsessing over new leads for the last six months, last 12 months, last two years, and you're still not where you want to be. And I am offering a new perspective that it is not just getting more leads. It is doing a better job with the leads you already have. And you do that through creating a content ecosystem. And specifically, I think you know social, email, and YouTube is a pretty cool combination. So I'm hoping this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, drop them below, and I'll catch you in the next video.